Okay, so this problem is going to be our grand finale. We have a lot of stuff going on with this problem. We have chain rules and quotient rules and all kinds of things. So, first of all, the original problem was written this way, theta over the square root of theta minus 4. What I've done already is I've rewritten it out as this form. So here's the original problem. I want to rewrite it with a one-half in the bottom because that will make it easier. When I get to the point, sooner or later, I'll have to take the derivative of the bottom. And when I do, that's going to involve the chain rule there for that part. So how do you know when you have to use a chain rule? Okay, it's whenever you have something inside that's not a single theta. So if you have a theta plus or minus something, or if you have a two times theta something else, that tells you you're going to have to use a chain rule. So in this case, because I have a theta minus four, that tells me I have something else going on in there that's going to require a chain rule. When I get to the part of the problem where I got to do the derivative of the bottom, again, I have to use chain rule on that. Let's jump into it. So y primed, first of all, we need to deal with the derivative of the outside. The derivative of sine is going to be cosine. So I have cosine theta over, and I'll, I'll write this one, I'll keep this one in the uh, square root notation. So we'll do that part first. Next, I'm going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside, this is the one that requires us to do a quotient rule because we have a fraction. We're going to use this right here. I rewrote it as that with the one half power. So I'll be using that one. Derivative means we got to take the the bottom, theta minus four to the one half times the derivative of the top. The derivative of theta is one minus the top thing, which is theta. All right. Now this is the point where I have to take the derivative of the bottom. Drew to the bottom again is going to involve that chain rule because you got something inside that's not a single theta. First, you start with the outside function. The one half comes down, theta minus four, subtract one from the power, and you'll get negative one half. But don't forget that you also have to multiply this by the derivative of theta minus four. In this case, it's going to be one. The derivative of theta minus four again is just the constant in front of the theta. On the bottom, you have theta minus 4, the 1 half power, but all that's going to be squared because that's what the quotient rule tells us to do. We need to square the bottom. So now that we've done all this, we have to do a little bit of cleanup work. So we'll first start with cosine theta over square root. Same thing we had before. We'll start with that part. Then we're going to clean up this. Let me get a little bit more space here. Okay, so this first one I'm going to actually leave all these in terms of one half power. You'll see why a little bit later in the problem while we're doing that. I'm going to write theta minus four, the one half power. It's times one, so I don't need to write anything. I'll leave that alone there. I have a minus here. Now I'm leaving some spaces because later on I'm going to have to combine this together as a single fraction. You don't want to leave your answer as complex fractions, and I can already tell because of the one half, I'll have a fraction down below. Now I'll have to combine it together with common denominators, so I'm leaving a space purposely so I can do that step at the same time, a little bit later. Let's clean this part up. That's going to be theta on top. On the bottom I have a 2, theta minus 4, and that's going to be to the 1 half power. On the bottom I have theta minus 4, the, the, uh, multiply the exponents, which means I'll get a power of 1 down there, so then I just don't have any exponent, theta minus 4. I have this. This is my next step. So at this point, I need to combine this together as a single fraction. So that's why I left myself some space here in order to do so. All right, so I have to get the common denominators to be 2 times theta minus 4 or the 1 half. So this one already has my common denominator. This first one is missing that, so I need to multiply top and bottom by 2 theta minus 4 to the 1 half power. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm going to be multiplying by. I'm going to multiply by that because then I can get this to be a single fraction on top. So we'll do, come down here and we'll do that cleanup step. Okay, so this is what you're going to get when you combine that together. On top, remember you're adding exponents together when you multiply. So I'm going to get 2 and then actually I just get theta minus 4 to the first power. Because when you add a 1 half and 1 half, you get 1. We have a minus theta. 
In the bottom I have two theta minus four to the one half power and down below here I still have theta over theta minus four. So now the next thing I want to do is I need to flip this over and make it a single fraction. So actually instead of doing it here, I'm going to write it up here so hopefully you got that first step already. I'm going to erase this and continue the problem up above here. I want to keep continuing to simplify this part. Okay, so y primed, I still have the first, the cosine piece is, has to stay there throughout the whole problem. And then now I'm, I'm just going to break this down a little bit more. Now first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this fraction up. And so it's going to be the top fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So what will happen is I end up getting, I'll, I'll write this fraction out. Now this top fraction I can simplify. I get 2 theta minus 8 minus theta, and I have 2 theta minus 4 to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom, which is 1 over theta minus 4. Okay, so again, when we divide fractions, multiply the top fraction by the reciprocal of the bottom one, we get this. This is the reason why I wanted to keep everything in terms of the 1 half power, because now I have to add these powers together and it's easier to do when they're written in exponent form instead of the radical form. I can just do a little bit of cleanup on top there. So I've, I've already multiplied that through. So I get 2 theta minus theta is theta. Okay, so now I'm going to erase this and I get down to this step here. Okay, what, I, what I'm left with is on top theta minus 8, okay, 2 theta minus theta. Down below, I have a 2, and then I have theta minus 4, but I'm going to add the powers here, so I get 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And then at that step, uh, there's not really much more that I can do for my answer. If you want, you can put the 1 half outside there in front of the cosine, so again, you could write it this way, 1 half cosine theta over square root theta minus 4 and then the rest of it here theta minus 8 and then theta minus 4 to the 3 halves power but that's really as far as you can go with your answer and so this right here uh, either one of these actually would be acceptable uh, that would be the derivative of that one again we use chain rules and we use quotient rules in that one